I have an Active Directory domain in Forest, and this is my domain controller in my Windows 2022 server. So here we can see the name of my domain in Forest is mydomain.int. And if I go to domain controllers, I only have the one domain controller. I'd like to add a second domain controller in my domain. So I'm going to switch over to another server and make that a secondary domain controller. I'm in my other server. I'm going to go to where it says Add Roles and Features in Server Manager. So I'll click Next. And I'll just go ahead and choose the default role-based or feature-based installation. Now, here's where you want to make sure that your server name and your IP address are set the way you want. And that's because you cannot rename the server after you promote it to be a domain controller. And you also want to have a static IP address. And that's because if you don't, it's possible the IP address might change in the future if it's receiving it dynamically. And if that IP address changes, then the other domain controller may not be able to find it. So I'll click Next. And here I want to add in Active Directory Domain Services. I'll click Add Features to go along with it and click Next. Now it's showing me some additional features I may want, but in this case, I don't need anything. I'll click Next, Next again, and Install. Now just installing the Active Directory Domain Services does not turn this into a domain controller. After these services are installed, then I can promote this server to be a domain controller. Now, this server has already been joined to the domain, but it doesn't have to be. If you want to, you can take a server that is not yet part of the domain and promote it, and it will add it to the domain at the same time that it promotes it to be a domain controller. Installation is complete, so now we can promote this server to be a domain controller. So I'm going to click on this little triangle that you see at the top, and it gives me the option to promote this to be a domain controller right at this stage. Here is a key option that you need to check. So you see three different types of deployments. You can add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a domain to an existing forest, or add a new forest. Now, in our case, I'm going to be adding a domain controller to an existing domain. So this is a domain that already has a domain, already has a forest that I showed in the beginning of this video. And it found the name of the domain because this computer is already a member of it. If not, you can go ahead and manually type that in. It also found the username and password that I had logged in with. But once again, you can change that information if it's not correct. I'm going to click Next. And now it's going to confirm that I'm going to have a DNS server installed as well as the global catalog. The DNS will allow me to resolve names to IP addresses as well as other types of records. And it's required in order for Active Directory to work properly. So you don't have to worry about accidentally unchecking that because it is grayed out. It's going to install DNS no matter what. However, the global catalog is an option. Now, there was a time when we had small hard drives where we didn't need to necessarily have a global catalog on all the different domain controllers. But storage is cheap now, so there's really no reason to not check the global catalog option. Global catalogs keep a copy of all Active Directory objects on them. Now, if you're trying to just create a read-only domain controller, you can choose that here, and then it'll be a read-only where you cannot make any changes to it, but it will replicate everything from a writable type of domain. Now, under the password, you can go ahead and put a password for the directory services restore mode. This is in case Active Directory breaks and you need to still log into your server. So I'm going to go ahead and put a password and a confirmation password here. It's pretty rare that you would need to use that, but I have had to use it on several occasions over the years. So I'll click Next. This delegation warning that you see here, that happens on every single installation, so you can't ignore it. Click Next, and now we see where does it want to replicate the existing data from. You can choose a specific domain controller or any. Now, in my case, I only have the one, so I could just choose either option. You can also choose to install from media as well. In my case, I'm just going to replicate from the other server. Here's the default locations for the database and log files. I'm going to leave those as they are. And I'll click Next. And as long as you don't see any red circles here, then you should be able to go ahead and click Install. Warnings are fine. You're always going to see some warnings, and they're always going to be exactly as you see here. I'm going to click Install. 
Once Active Directory is installed, it will automatically restart. And when I go to log in, it will be the first time that we log into this computer as an Active Directory domain controller. I'm now logging in for the first time into my second domain controller in my Active Directory domain. Server Manager automatically opens up when I log in. I'm going to go to Tools, and you should see the five Active Directory tools pop up, and there they are. The most common is going to be Active Directory Users and Computers, and it should confirm that I now have a second Active Directory domain controller when I go into the Domain Controller's Organizational Unit. And here is Active Directory Users and Computers. I'll click on Domain Controllers, and there it is. It's showing my second domain controller in Active Directory.